Hey YouTube, welcome to this next installment of the Avion blog. So today we're going to have a look at a few reviews, um, well not a few, but we're going to have a look at the uh, Toptronic T835, uh, which is a budget 150 Rand digital multimeter, which I actually think is worth the money um, if you're just looking for tinkering or a couple of basic multimeters around the lab, secondary meters, if, if, if you're a beginner maybe it's a primary meter for you, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think it's well worth the money, so we're going to compare it to the Fluke uh, 117 digital multimeter and see how it performs. Hey YouTube, welcome to the Toptronic T835 multimeter review. This is more of an extended use review of this uh, Toptronic multimeter by Hellerman and Titan here in South Africa. Um, the meter was originally purchased as a sub, uh, sort of like a, a secondary or third or fourth or fifth whatever multimeter for doing basic measurements on a secondary bench or for checking computer power supplies in the field etc. Now although I do have many, very many um, multimeters, uh, I do like to maintain a bit of a collection of meters uh, for various uses. Um, in this circumstance uh, I have the uh, little Toptronic meter and I'm going to compare it against the Fluke 117 uh, for everyday use uh, and purposes. The Fluke 117 being a 3000 odd rand meter, the T835 Toptronic meter being a measly 150 rand multimeter. Let's see how the two weigh up for your general sort of electronics purposes. Right, so first things first, we're going to take out our few little test components. Um, this meter does your volts AC DC. It'll do up to 20 mega ohms of resistance. It'll do diode continuity, degrees Fahrenheit Celsius up to 10 amps and as low as 2 milliamps on the range. Uh, 2 milliamps max giving me a range of uh, actual microamps. So yeah, for all intents and purposes it might be able to do the job quite nicely. So let's start off with the look and feel of the meter. The meter does not look fancy at all. It's a very plain design. Uh, but in so saying it is quite compact even compared to the Fluke 117. Um, it's substantially smaller than the 117. It does have a nice feel to the button um, and it does have a somewhat thin sort of um, removable rubber holster similar to the Fluke 117 just with a slightly different this is more of a rubber material, this is more of a plasticky rubber. So let's uh, take a look at the functionality of the two meters and see if the T835 could hold its own against the Fluke 117. So, first things first, backlight. Um, I'm just going to head on over to volts AC. This is a manual ranging, so you'd have to select your maximum range. <coughs> the first thing you'll notice, the display on this little meter is crisp as hell. Razor sharp in comparison to the Fluke or pretty much any of the other meters that I've used. The one thing that's also quite interesting when it comes to this meter over here is the simple way in which it does things. Um, like so, for example, we're on our volts AC. I'm going to first, before we go any further, check this backlight. Let's power down so it gets a bit darker. We've got our fluke backlight and we've got the backlight on this little meter. It's like, yeah, I'd expect this light on this meter and vice versa. But um, yeah, that's not what we're here for only. Um, after all, backlight isn't a very expensive item. So, yeah, for all intents and purposes, the little meter's got a very good screen. We've ascertained that. If we go across to our voltage measurements, let's, let's just do a few small DC voltage measurements. Auto ranging always makes it a lot easier to get the job done. I know I'm measuring a known value of around 12 volts, so we're going to go to our next highest voltage being 20 volts. First things first, we're going to do our measurement of our 12 volts. Uh, estimate 12 volts rail with the fluke. And we get a 12,02 volts. Okay, now we're going to measure that same rail on the. And we've got 12,01 volts. So, pretty much much of a much. Let's just slide across over to 5 volt rail. So, we've got 5.04. And on the fluke. 
So for all intents and purposes, we've got uh, the same reading so far. Now, this one will do the 20 volt scale. So we're going to go down to the 2 volt scale. And we're going to just set up a voltage of oh, somewhere low. Let's have a look and see what we're getting over here. We're getting 1, 240. 1, now let's see on the fluke what we reread. One comma two four one. So one comma two four zero, one comma two four one, much of a much, both meters are pretty much holding their own over here. In fact the little C A thirty five has surprised me with the accuracy in comparison to the fluke. But um, we're not going to go through too many voltage scales. Like I said, it was just a bit of a reference check. We know the fluke would be more accurate. Uh, well, technically should be more accurate. Um, <coughs> let's go over to the continuity tester. Now on this meter, the continuity and the diode test are in the same function. Uh, fluke, of course, your nice latching. I don't think this is... Uh, you can hear the scratchiness. Definitely not latching. But it does give you a pretty loud indication when it does get going so and it is pretty fast the fluke being latching picks up very quickly as well right so let's uh, do a few diode tests let's head over to the diode test functionality of the two meters and uh, pull out our 1N4007 diode uh, again on the fluke 117 um, worrying about the forward voltage of the diode and then we've got our 0 0.563 volts 0 0.564 so let's check it out now on the Toptronic 0 0.593 volts again no nice beep indication but um, still good enough for doing a reference check on something to make sure that a diode or a transistor is working so yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that um, Capacitors, this one doesn't do a capacitance, so there's no point in measuring a capacitor or anything like that. Um, it would be a complete waste of your time. Um, so we're going to go for a 10 ohm resistance. So let's go to resistance, 10 ohms. Uh, here we're going to go to our minimum resistance value, which is 200 ohms. And then we're going to pop our resistor in on the fluke. We get 10.1 ohms. And on the Toptronic, We get a 10.3 ohms. So, okay, I'm, I'm alright with that so far. But there's a difference, and you are starting to see um, the two sliding apart a little bit. Bearing in mind the Fluke 117 is, is not necessarily the most accurate multimeter for this sort of thing. But uh, just on a tip 41C, if you wanted to test the transistor with this uh, meter over here, we shouldn't have any issues with that. Pretty much get in there. This is an NPN transistor, so we'd go base to collector. Now oh, we've got to go back to diode. Base to collector. We've got a 0.6 there. Emitter, 0.6 there. We come across, we'll have nothing. And we go the other way, we've got nothing. So happy days. Um, everything works out quite nicely over there. <coughs> Low resistance. Um, I'm not expecting anything phenomenal out of the little Toptronic meter, but we do get 1,5 ohms, uh, well sorry, 1,3 ohms, and on the Fluke we're registering a nice solid 1,5, so ah, much of a much. Um, so yeah, as far as everyday usability this little Toptronic meter could probably do a lot of what the bigger more expensive meters can do and possibly even more for less money so one has to wonder why we all go out and buy the most expensive of multimeters but now I'm going to explain to you basically why the reason why I purchase these meters is uh, the Flukes and Bremens and the like will outlast this Toptronic meter by many years number one I'm not saying the Toptronic won't last, it will. It'll last you for a good couple of years before it starts giving you problems. But these will definitely outlast these. Another reason is safety. This one I know is Cat 3 600 volts. My Brahmins are Cat 4000 volts. 
I know they've been tested and they're safe. This one claims a rating of what does it claim here? Let's have a look see. I don't even see a cat rating. How scary is that? Anyway, so it's supposed to be 500 volts cat 3. Um, I don't see that on the cover anyway. It just says max 500 volts, but uh, if you look here, cat 3, 600 volts written over here, but down here we have max 500 volts. Huh. So, yeah. <laughs> Distills um, kind of uh, wrecked my confidence in this meter's uh, safety margins over there. But in any case, for electronics, the safety margins aren't as important as if you're working on live electrical circuits. So, for your general sort of electronics tinkering and stuff, the Toptronic T835, I'd rather have, if I was in the shoes of a hobbyist or somebody starting out, <coughs> a lot of people would say go out and buy the Fluke, the Brayman's, whatever. I would personally prefer to have three or four of these than one of these. Just my opinion. Um, in fact, for the price of one of these, you could probably have ten of these. So that, that just gives you an idea of uh, what we're talking about. A few things that are missing from the T835, which um, I would miss, are things such as the bar graph, um, which I've got on my Brayman's and my Fluke meters. Um, these meters don't have any such bar graph. Um, Another thing that's missing is capacitance, frequency, and a couple other little things. Uh, subsequently, this one does have a temperature function, which it, well, this one doesn't. I do use it from time to time for doing heatsink measurements or exhaust air temperature measurements, etc. But um, in so saying, it's not a, a beginning or ending of... Uh, it's not going to make a difference between me buying the meter or not, let's put it that way. But it is handy having that function if you're starting out. So, my opinion, bottom line, if you don't have a lot of money, go out and get yourself a couple of these T835s. They'll do you quite nicely in the electronics hobby industry um, and possibly even in the repair industry. I use this one on my workbench daily for uh, just doing cross-reference, voltage measurements, etc. It does the job. It's never let me down. It's never given me any issues. I would, however, not rely on it if I was working on high potential circuits. Thanks for watching.